And Are You Okay is a not safe for work podcast, so any young listeners are discouraged from continuing. However, we literally have no way to track that. So do whatever the hell you want and enjoy the show. Speaking, speaking of, like, exposure and stuff, so I guess doing Super Game Day, you know, she's been DJing for a really long time, yeah. like, if you haven't noticed with her, it's for the love of DJing. Like, it's mm-hmm. like, it's like, because she loves DJing and doing music. It's not so much necessarily like, oh, I want to be a DJ, like, type of situation. Like, she's like, I'm going to just do it, and I love it. And somebody, kind of like what we're doing. Like, even, like, we have, yeah. like, a goal, like, yes, like, we want to do this at a higher level that we can quit our jobs. was like, we do this because we care and because we, like, we do love it. It's not, a, it's, a, it's a labor of love. Oh, but I guess, sure. like, doing Super Game Day and, like, talking to the people that she was talking to, the networking, I guess she got, like, bit by the being outside more DJ bug and she was just like she had hit me up and she was like hey like I want to start like running more events and doing like little small things here and there she was like I know you be outside and I'm already tapped in with you with DB4O she was just like would you want to kind of do like some cross shit and I was like look any chance I got to like show my face and like big up the brand I was like hell yeah (laughs) (laughs) I'm gonna gonna do it so they did like their first little show yesterday and there was two people there Two people that I didn't expect to know shit about anime, but they did. And we had a nice little conversation. <laughs> Gave them a card like, and everything and stuff like that. Those business but, cards are coming in handy. Yo, they're so dope. <laughs> <laughs> I've already handed a few out myself. Yeah, I'm like, there you go. <laughs> Double side with our endeavors, you know, our anime fans, the Dragon Ball for life. Yeah, buddy. And then yeah, you buddy. flip it over and you get, and you're okay. A Star Wars podcast. A Star Wars podcast. That's right. That's what you're listening to right now. You're listening to Mikey and Maddie. Rogue One. Are you checking in, in, baby? Uh, I am checking in. I knew you're you're always checked in. I'm super excited. I'm super excited. I'm excited about this episode, bro. Uh, (laughs) This little mini series we've created. We. This is mostly your brainchild, my friend. (laughs) I'm going to give you the credit there. Um, I am but a vessel. (laughs) uh, Excited to to dive into the topic. But. before we do, I, I mean, I guess, you know, we're, we're off the coattails of Super Game Day. And we, uh, you know, I always do this thing where we, we just talk randomly and then we eventually cut into things. But shout out to Anshi, you know, DJ extraordinaire. If you're in Philly, shout out to Anshi. Check her out. Maybe we'll throw her socials in the description of this video. Maybe wow. she'll give us a little Star Wars mix at some point that we can slide in somewhere. Who knows? Uh, that'd be fire. That'd be fire. <laughs> I feel like, it. <laughs> I feel like that's an obtainable goal. I love it. I love it. Uh, but this is, this is you know, Matt, it's been a, a long journey of us doing this, maybe like 12 or 16 episodes. Uh, this It started well before we started covering Ahsoka, but it, it was during the entirety of that and for a few episodes after. But this is the final time I'm going to acknowledge the, the Screen Actors Guild and writers because they have officially, last time we weren't so sure, they have officially negotiated with the AMPTP, which is great. Um, you know, they're, they'll renegotiate in three years and hopefully by that time Skynet hasn't taken over the world and we're not like slaves to a uh, gigantic AI over. It's on but, the way. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> as, assuming it's that, coming. that humanity somehow makes it to that point, then, um, you know, hopefully we, they can just get the protections they need and can keep doing things and making things that we love so we can talk about them on places like DB4L and Annie, are you okay? A Star Wars podcast. The Annie Maniacs, uh, as we have so dubbed you, we have got another fun one for you today. Going to slide in a little spoiler warning, and before we hyper dive right into things, Just last week right in. we recasted the original trilogy Big Three Plus One with modern day actors. We're applying yes. that same concept to the sequel trilogy edition of recast them. I hardly know him. I love and that I, name. By the way. I, I was super <laughs> geeked when it popped up. <laughs> you know, I, I, I follow all our podcasts, as you all should. Click the link yeah. in the description below. Don't forget like to subscribe. leave us a review. Five, five stars. stars five nice. stars. Yeah. <laughs> and when, uh, when it popped up in like my widget, I was like, I fucking love it. <laughs> this could kind of just be like a reoccurring thing moving forward. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hell yeah. We'll find ways to do it. Um, Big facts. 
uh, but we're changing it up. You know, this is, this was your brainchild, and we did the modern day actors last time, but this time we're going to be choosing actors from the '90s in their yes. prime, yes. as if the sequel trilogy kicked off right after the original trilogy ended. George Lucas took a small hiatus after 1983 and said, "You know what? It's time." We're doing the prequels, <laughs> we're doing the sequels. I'm, he said, I'm, "Bills, bills need to be paid. It's time." That's right. That's right. So uh, we have we. Did, we don't discuss this because we want to surprise each other and get their yes. natural reactions. Yes. I'm wondering if we maybe have an overlap. Who knows? Um, but we have recasted Ray, Finn, Poe, and Kylo Ren. Yep. Um, Matt, I'll let you pick who you want to start out with, and I'm fine taking it in whichever direction okay. this takes us, but um, I'm excited to hear what you got <clears throat> lined right. So, project. I would like to do Ray last, and there's a reason for that. Okay. Like, yeah, because I because I have two people that I have to pick, and there's a reason. But uh, I guess I'll I'll tee that up with let's let's start with Finn. Let's start with Finn. FN one eight six seven five three zero nine. Oh, it is the nineties, so it is eight six seven five three. There you go. All right, all right. And that's the name of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> FN eight six seven five three zero nine. There we go. There we go. So, I can I tried to recast them, kind of emulating the vibe of the initial actor, same portrayal of the character, and then I also okay. tried to fit in like who I thought would like be good with that. So Finn. Uh, for what he was in uh, Force Awakens, which I wish he would have stayed that way, but he did kind of turn into like comic relief and things like that and like a background character and whatnot. But if I'm going off of the portrayal of Finn, of how he was in Force Awakens, had he stayed like that, I'm looking at a, a, a actor, John Boyega, who I love. You know, uh, he could play very serious. He'd be very funny. His comedic timing's on point. His delivery of dry sarcasm when uh it shouldn't be funny but makes it funny as i think it's uh very it's, it's up there with like current actors so i switched the race of finn okay. which is why i want to do ray last because to keep well we'll get there when we get there <laughs> yeah no but i'm like, here for it, here for it. all right so for finn i picked keanu reeves interesting choice <laughs> interesting choice i i can see it yeah, <laughs> I can really see. It. So you take the Bill and Ted aspect of Keanu's acting, but then kind of slip in some of the Matrix vibes. Yeah, the reluctant hero. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm going. Keanu Reeves would and, be my and thing. Listen, um, I think people. It's it's been memed quite quite regularly that like Keanu plays a really dumb character or can play dumb characters, but the confusion that he's able to portray in his characters, I think really fits Finn, yeah. especially in the force awakens. And yeah, like you said, yeah, if we're, if like we're a... trying to take that vibe and continue it, I think that's a really good pick. And I also think he's super underrated. Um, I love Keanu Reeves. Same. I don't <laughs> think, I don't think um, he's the greatest actor ever, but I certainly think that he's pretty good in the first matrix. And like, there are roles that suit him better. He was great in Constantine. You know, yeah, I, I love like this kind of scene. I'm yeah. still, I'm still like fingers crossed that they like let him do that again. I don't know where DC would be able to do that because they're a fucking dumpster fire. But if, <laughs> <laughs> if, <laughs> I mean, unless they're hiring, then DC's the best thing smoking. <laughs> <But> <laughs> Could you imagine if James Gunn was just like, oh, I'm gonna let these two anime Star Wars podcasters come in and, and help me. Or even, or even better, he's like, I love that you guys are doing. Had a job for you, but then I heard you were talking shit. Impulse to be the main speedster of the DCU. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> You're crazy. They can call me crazy all they want. <laughs> big, 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 big facts. But yeah, but with Keanu Reeves, like acting shops, like I feel like he's he, he's an enigma is definitely a word that I would use for him. But it's like, sure. but it, but it works. Like weirdly. This is a crazy parallel, and it just kind of smacked me right now, so I don't know how I fully feel about it, but it sounds good in this moment. Like, Keanu Reeves, Owen Wilson, same person. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like they're, wow. they're, they're both, like, I, I would say Owen Wilson now gets, like, his props, like, for actually being, like, a really good actor. It's like people, mm -hmm. like, see through the quirkiness and, like, oh, no, he's, like, amazing. I, I th I, you know what? I feel like um, the fuck was the movie with the dog? Uh, a long kid. Uh, 
Yeah, Marley and Me. I feel like that movie is what people are like, oh, no, he actually can act, act. Like, he's not just like... Because, you know, pri- prior to that, I've always loved Owen Wilson, but uh, <clears throat> a lot of people critique him, and a lot Keanu gets a lot of the same critiques. It's that like a typecast. That they yeah, can, he's, they he's just playing He's playing himself. Like, he's not mm-hmm. acting. It's just like, oh, it's yeah, just like Owen Sandra Wilson. Bullock. Yeah, 1,000%. <laughs> like, yeah, she's Miss Congeniality, and then when she's in Gravity, <laughs> she's Miss Congeniality in Space. <laughs> facts facts and i feel like <laughs> Owen wilson and keanu get a lot of that but like with marley and me there's like oh no he like bodied that did great like showed range and stuff and it's like now people like like we accept his quirking especially with uh wedding crashers that definitely like mm-hmm. took him out to another stratosphere i feel like keanu reeves like has turned in some like really good performances that uh don't get lauded i will say super slept on movie and it's high key probably one of my favorite movies of all time fucking street kings I love that movie. I've never seen it. I've never even heard of it actually. I love that movie. It's um I think it's on HBO Max currently, but I have the DVD if it's not. I can definitely lend it to you. Long story less long, not to get caught on that tangent, but it's like Keanu Reeves is playing like a dirty cop who is struggling with his moral compass of being a dirty cop. Cause he, ooh, you he, dirty rat. he does Ooh, <laughs> you dirty rat, you killed my brother. <laughs> But it's just, yeah, it's it's a it's a really good movie. Um, fucking <clears throat> my man Chris Evans is in it before pre Captain America. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pre Johnny Storm too. Yeah, uh, it was around Johnny Storm era. It was after Johnny Storm, so we still had like the low cut and stuff. Okay, okay. But it was like it was like after Fantastic Four, before Captain America. Forrest Whitaker's in it. It's like a lot of heavy hitters. Oh on the shit! Movie. Okay, yeah, it's a great movie. But yeah, Keanu Reeves would be my fan. Um. One last point on Keanu Reeves there for your take on Finn. Uh, I believe he does a lot of his own stunts. Yeah. Um, and I think that there's an action element to Finn. Uh, not so much in The Last Jedi. <laughs> John Wick, baby. Certainly in The Force Awakens and then also in The Rise of Skywalker, I felt like they gave him some more action sequences to actually kind of show off his physical ability there. Um, and I think he would do a really good job uh, doing I stuff agree. like that. So I um, agree. I will give you my fin now. Let's get it. Um, I think, you know, I agree with everything you said. They have to be a little funny, have to be a little serious. Um, someone who's capable of doing both and in spades. Uh, this is, uh, this actor is, uh, he's kind of a wild one. But it's like a fresh take on things. Like, Prince of Thieves type guy. Ooh. Maybe from West Philadelphia? Born and raised? I believe so. Yeah. <laughs> I actually love that. <laughs> it was like one of those things where I was like, I was like, is it, am I just picking Will Smith because he's like one of the only prominent black actors in the 90s? Or am I picking him because he literally hits all of those beats in spades and he does. Um, yeah. Also, that man has been getting dragged in the news lately and this guy needs a win. So, he needs uh, a W. We, we are give casting it him. I love <laughs> the 90s sequel trilogy I love as that. Finn. I think you fucking kill it, dude. There I agree. are so many roles that um, I, I haven't been the biggest fan of some of his recent films, but I don't know if it's necessarily his fault that like he's been put into movies that I just haven't hit the mark for me. You know, um, you know what's you know what's funny about Will Smith, and I I've, I I don't think I've ever said this on a public platform, and I'll probably get killed. People's immediate reactions will be to kill me, but like being an adult, you'll realize what I'm saying is a fact. The thing about Will Smith, Will Smith is a person who's become larger than his career, and that's like I mean that is a compliment. Mm-hmm. Before I say what I'm about to say, if you really think about it. Go through his filmography. Will Smith has more losses than wins, like by a lot. I have a, <laughs> like I have if, a super hot take on one of his movies that I actually think is terrible. Which one? Um, I Robot. I think I Robot. I movie. love I Robot. <laughs> yeah, I love that movie. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's a good performance by him. I yeah, mean, I don't I think don't I don't. Even... That's one of the ones I don't think I. I don't know if I love it. Cause I'm like, oh, it's such a great movie. It's like, I, I, but I don't, I wouldn't go as far as to say it's like a guilty pleasure movie. But I do enjoy iRobot. Uh, it's, we've, it's we've like talked summer blockbuster. About supposed to how I like my biggest toxic masculinity trait is that I don't cry. One of two, th- I'm sorry, three now, three movies that I've ever cried in pursuit of happiness. Mm, yes, <sighs> that bathroom me. scene gets uh, me every time. When when uh, Jaden loses his Captain America. 
I don't ah, know what it is. It won't hit me to the core. Yeah, yeah that's the big one. Will absolutely carries seven pounds. Whoa, phenomenal! That movie gets that, that's, that's a slept on movie. That that's another one. It's like it's a terrible movie, but he was great in it. Like yeah. he did great, so it's like it made the movie. And can Rosario you, Rosario Dawson does good she, in everything. She <laughs> yeah, she did, she really does do good in everything. Um, can I tell you what movie really made me feel like he would be perfect to be Finn? Independence, Independence Day. Day. <laughs> 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 that to me is like that's Finn. That's Finn personified. That's Finn, for sure, for sure. I'm like rolling. if you were to take that energy that John Boyega brings and compare it to another character, like hundred uh, percent. I, I wish I could remember Will's character in that movie, but it's like Lieutenant true. something, something. Yeah. But yeah, that is the vibe that I think. That Lieutenant was. Diane. That Ice movie's Cream. got way. <laughs> <laughs> that movie's got way more heart than people give it credit for. Um, yeah, that you know what Independence Day is. Remember when we were talking about movies where you like have nothing but fond memories, but you'll probably never watch it again. Like, mm-hmm. like you'll be like, I love Independence Day. I should probably watch that. <laughs> you never, never watch it. That's again. on that list. <laughs> 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 I mean, I'll watch it if I'm like in passing, but I don't, you don't flip through the TV channels like you used to. So it's like, I, I'd have yeah. to be at my parents' house and they happen to have like independent stay on. Yeah. It's, that's one of the ones like if it's on, like, I'm like, oh shit, like I'll watch it. Like, but it's like, I'm not seeking it out to put it on. <laughs> yeah. I'm not checking, I'm not checking which streaming platform has it. So I go, well, let me throw this on real quick. Enemy of the State 2 is another super slept on Will Smith movie. Love that movie. That was a good. I have not caught that one. I really wanted to watch the one where he's cloned himself. Or, oh, like, Gemini Man. Ash. Gemini Man. Oh, Trash. <laughs> <laughs> Movie's terrible. Uh, I thought Hancock was going to be good too, and it was. I love y'all. Uh, I love Hancock. Hancock, bad guys. Do you want a cookie or something? <laughs> oh, we uh, we must have like completely differing opinions outside of Pursuit of Happiness and Seven Pounds on Will. Yeah, I mean that's why. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we work. <laughs> that's why we work. <laughs> Uh, who 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 you who who would you like to pick next? Uh, but I love I love I love Will Smith for Finn though. That's a great, great. Who choice. better to move on to than Finn's best friend, Poe Dameron? <laughs> best friend. <laughs> oh, they they hang out. <laughs> oh, <they're, laughs> perfect, perfect, uh, perfect, uh, excellent reasoning why they hang out. Yeah, great, great descriptor. <laughs> well, would you like to go first? Sure, sure. Um, I wanted to match Oscar Isaac's energy for this uh-huh. role. And I yeah. could not find someone who matched his energy. So instead I decided to just be like, let me pick someone who could come across as a fly boy, but is suave. Uh, and that brought me to a one George Clooney. Um, oh, you know, it's funny. I, I was going to pick George Clooney, but in my head, I felt like he was too old, like in the nineties. So I went back and looked, and he's, I think he, he would have been 32, which I think Oscar Isaac was in his 30s when he played Poe. You, you know what it was? George Clooney was around for so long. I feel like he felt older in the 90s oh, than what yeah. he was. That's he probably was, what it was. He had gray in his hair when he played Batman, but no, he that's, was not that old when he played that, Batman. That's that I, for me. And, and I, I remember George Clooney when he was on um, fucking Facts Grey's of Life. And he was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it was ER, not Grey's Anatomy. Oh, shit. Okay. I remember that episode where he got killed off in the car accident. I remember that vividly. But uh, That's yeah, but like, for. oh yeah, facts. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, <laughs> man. If you haven't seen ER now, that shit was out like ninety six. Like, oh, forgot it. <laughs> but yeah, but uh, my for whatever reason, like the image that I have of George Clooney in my head is always from Batman and Robin, and I see the gray hair, like you were saying, what he yeah, probably because was. You in like me for some reason watched that movie on VHS multiple times. Yo, pre pre Christian pre Christian Bale Clooney was my Batman. It's like, <laughs> weird to say, but true. Like because I didn't know who Val Kilmer was, no matter how many times I watched that oh, movie. Oh, like, I knew. I but you guy. knew who George Clooney was. It's yeah, like, Clooney just, was my Batman pre Christian Bale. Like no one could tell. The bat credit card? Are you kidding? What? <laughs> like hell yeah, <laughs> the bat skates. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, Clooney, Clooney, like I, 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 you saw Flash. You, I, you saw Flash, right? The the new Flash. The second I have Flash? not. Oh, I've shit. seen well, the spoiler. I'm 
All right, yeah. So like when he popped up, I geeked. I was like, because I pirated it. I wasn't supporting. Uh, sure, sure. Like I didn't watch it in the movie theater, <laughs> but I I, yeah, I was geeking when he showed up. I was like, oh shit, <laughs> it's, it's Clooney. <laughs> yeah, he will not be the Batman movie forward, likely. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I that, that's funny. I, I literally like that was my first like knee jerk. I was like Clooney. But then I was like, ah, I feel like he was old back then. But he breaked he's, all, he's just always shown as old, or or what's the word? I'm, you know what I mean? Elder but, um, statesman, <laughs> seasoned. <laughs> uh, it really was like the oceans films that kind of like informed that take. Um, mm, that's a good point too. And I think I think that him and Will Smith. I actually looked this up because I was curious. I was like, have they ever been in a movie together? And the answer is no. Mm, um, that's- I was like. This could have been a really cool dynamic, but they didn't do it. I guess they just thought Jeff Goldblum was better. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, can't go wrong. <laughs> can't go wrong with Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> yeah. But um, that to me, he feels like he could definitely be a swan of like Ian Malcolm pilot Fox. type guy. Damn, that would have been a good Jeff Goldblum would have been a good uh, Poe. He has the hair for it. Thinking about it, like I'm thinking of his, he does like his, hair for it. like his portrayal as Ian Malcolm is basically Poe Dameron. <laughs> the uh, the uh, missile it uh, finds finds a way into uh, the reactor. It's just the, the open. It's the open shirt scene for no reason. Like why well, was yeah, your yeah. shirt open there? <laughs> Take my jacket. <laughs> you know, there's like a statue of him that in that and like. It's somewhere. I don't know where it is. It's not in America, but there's like a statue of him, like in that Jurassic Park pose with the shirt open. It's like a thing. People like I hope go his there. eyes are made of like rubies that make make it look like they're fly eyes. <laughs> That'd be funny as shit. <laughs> 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 Bringing everything together, but uh, yeah, now nah, I'm rolling with Clooney. That's my guy. But I think I did find someone who I feel like would perfectly encapsulate the Poe Dameron energy from the 90s and boy was he a big star it could be argued that towards the end of the 90s he might have been the biggest action star out and boy did he make a resurgence a renaissance if one would say i picked the one mr brendan fraser oh shit okay oh i'm here for it mummy brendan fraser <laughs> yes yeah, mummy def- mummy brendan fraser yeah could definitely be Poe Dameron. That's Literally, just take, that. just take, just take Rick O'Connell and just put him in Star Wars. Shit, dude. wow, <laughs> that's really good. I, I, uh, thank you, I thank totally you. see it. I totally see it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, like, man. I don't know. Even you, like, even the delivery of the lines. Like, I hear, like, I can hear his oh, voice. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, me too. I, he would have stolen the film. One thousand percent. People when, would have been like, why isn't he the main character? Like the That's, scene with Kylo when he's like interrogating him, he was just like, do I speak? Do you speak? Like, yeah. Like, talks, <laughs> first, talk yeah. When you see him doing it. Fucking George the Jungle, dude. Holy yeah, shit. Man. Okay, and, I'm, and, I'm and, here for and, it. And we know he can fuck up a leather jacket. Oh, um, yeah. Like, we already know it. <laughs> we already know it. But yeah, Brendan Fraser, I'll go on my pole. For obvious reasons. I don't even feel like we got a deep dive on that one. No, <laughs> like, no. I think like, that the, the vibe really does match. Um and I think that he could definitely play a pilot like that. One thousand really fits. Um, wow, good work, man! I'm I like, thought, I'm, I, thought, I'm, I thought you would like that one. I thought, I thought I was like, I was like, oh yeah, Clooney, that's a good one. No, so, not even close. <laughs> so funnily enough, when you had texted me that you um, were like excited about your Kylo and stuff like that. I was like trying to think like I was like oh like who would be my po like when you text me that I don't know what that what why that just, text like said something off I'm like <laughs> fucking Brendan Fraser oh <laughs> like, got got to be cuz cuz so um little little behind the scenes behind the green curtain when I had asked you if you wanted to do like you know like just 90s or like 90s era so it was like you know 90s into the early 2000s cuz that would have like dramatically changed my list <laughs> but when you had said like no like just the 90s <clears throat> i was struggling with the poe thing and i was like brendan frazier well sure. i'll tell you why i wanted to stick <clears throat> no, I love to the it. 90s very fine with that be- because we would have gotten into a bunch of actors who were casted as prequel characters because mm. and that's why i was like oh i don't want to touch that as much like if we can if we can hang like back like just a little bit further then no, I think rolling. we're in a good spot. And I, I'm really happy that we did it this way because I think we yeah. got some really quality picks out of it. Um, what a, what a, to cue it up, you were very excited about your Kylo pick, and I've yeah. been waiting. So I would love for you to go because this is the one I'm not – 
I'm happy with my pick, but this was the one I struggled with the most. Okay, as an adult, uh, this actor, well, not as an adult, he is, he was an adult <laughs> back then too, but like <laughs> as an older, more veteran actor, I so desperately want this person to portray a specific character in Star Wars. Okay. And we've mentioned it on the podcast quite a bit. I'm going to lose my shit if you picked the same person I picked. Oh, okay. Younger than perfectly encapsulates to me, Kylo Ren. I'm about to freak the fuck out because I feel like you de- we definitely picked the same person. I think the ultimate 90s Kylo Ren would be Johnny Depp. <laughs> That's who I picked. I don't know if you can see it. Hold on, the, light's, the light's too bright. Uh, do you see it? I believe you. you, you see it? To, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly who I picked. Yeah, <laughs> uh, dude. Go, I want to know what what do you think uh, he so, would have been against Kylo Ren? I was I was going back and forth between like so funny enough when I had asked you that question it was because Kylo Ren because mm-hmm. had you uh, had we been okay with like late nineties early two thousands I would have said Tom Welling from Smallville. Okay, I would have picked okay. him because I wanted to pick someone who could portray a villain and a good guy like who can do both sides like someone who's like oh it's believable that they're the bad guy because that's how ben started off as kylo but i wouldn't be like oh you're trying to force me to like him so i was just like who and who could i feel like would have the range to be both the antagonist and the protagonist but also play like the super conflicted tortured inside like what Ben was going through the his internal struggle it's like that's like Johnny Depp teed up like, yeah, seriously. Like, he gets out of bed for roles like that like, that's hilarious well yeah, yeah I think Johnny Depp too I feel like he didn't start doing quirky characters <clears throat> until later in his career which is why I desperately want him to be Hondo Onaka um, yeah but Hell yeah some of his earlier roles all the Tim Burton stuff the brooding aspects like of some of those younger roles to me like really fits Kylo Ren he had the hair for it too um, yeah. it just it just fit I, I, th- I think that um he can play to a level of a there's a certain depth to him when he plays a villain that really I think strikes chords and has a seriousness to it I wanted to I think one of the things that Adam Driver does is like there's like a few things to his character that are because he's angry. It's like sometimes hard to take him seriously, like when when he's like smashing things apart. Mm. Um, But there's this like manic energy to that that I think that he can capture really well where I would take him more seriously. than Maybe I took Adam Driver um, in the role. So, yeah, he was the when I was like thinking about it more and like I was I really had a hard time getting myself started. He was actually the first person I picked um, because I was just, and then that kind of like helped me inform everything else. And I was like, wow, this is, that to me would have been really strong casting. And and uh, I think that if, if let's say he ever makes his way into it and he's not Hondo Anaka, I do think he could be a Sith Lord. Um, if he Ooh, ever made his way yeah. to Star Wars. Big, big facts. Big, big facts. But yeah, that's, that's hilarious. Yeah, Johnny Depp is who I picked. <laughs> That's who, that's who I pick. Great minds. Great minds. Well, we can't right. disagree on everything. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited because I know that you are very excited. And you waited to yes. tell us your Ray from nowhere to Ray Skywalker. Yes. So <clears throat> I wanted to do Ray last reason being is you actually kind of said part a big part as to why I wanted to go Ray last. We had mentioned that we were doing this strictly based off 90s actors 90s actors who were in their prime in the 90s and as you had noted <clears throat> with your will smith pick there weren't a lot of really prominent black actors like in the 90s it was like will denzel or at least they were they were all older there weren't young black actors who were like really prominent they were all like the angela bassist the lauren fishburns the forest whitakers of the world like morgan freeman's like not someone like o- older elder statesman like people yeah like the people who like george clooney who f- who've always felt like an older character right but it's kind of exactly. like when i'm watching the nba and i know Joel Embiid's younger than me but i'm like that's a grown-ass man he's older than me yeah, <laughs> even though I've been on this planet for like five years longer. <laughs> yeah, I feel. I feel. I, it's funny you say that. I feel that same exact right way about Kyrie Irving. I was like, I hate the fact that I'm older than him. <laughs> He's just out here fucking rich as shit. <laughs> like, like, but yeah, but especially with um, female actors, uh, 
black like that that so it was just I was super conflicted because changing Finn from being a black actor to is is Keanu he's like Hawaiian right or like wasn't he like from like his mother's like Hawaiian or some shit uh, I, I, I know he's not one. just white I know he's well, like something. it's probably a Freddie Prince Jr. situation where we yeah like, oh they're something. very white passing but there's something there's yeah, something yeah, there. I know, yeah I'm, I'm like positive like, his fucking name's Keanu like I'm like I'm pretty sure like he he got something so. I picked two people because I wanted to, A, if I was going to take away a black character, I wanted to give one back just to Mm -hmm. keep all things equal. But then I also, my first choice would have been four white actors, well, three white and Keanu, (laughs) 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 which if we're doing this in the 90s, if we're being real, that's probably what it would have been. (laughs) Exactly. So I will give my, since I removed a a skin focus, kin folk, (laughs) I'll put one back. Oh, for Ray, there wasn't a lot of young actresses that uh that I could have picked from. Like I could have went Holly Berry, and I, I know like you know she did uh, Catwoman, so I know she would have had like the physical aspect, great actress and stuff. But there was something to um I don't want to say pretty because Daisy Ridley is beautiful, beautiful mm-hmm. woman. But there's something uh too well kept about Holly Berry. Like Ray's kind of like disheveled, like a street urchin, like has like that gritty feel about her. So for my, since I removed Finn, since I took away a black act, I want to put one back. I picked Lisa Bonet to be Ray. Okay. Okay. I feel like she's enough of an enigma and very like out there that she would fit in this wacky world of Star Wars. And, you know, we know that she's a great actor. Her whole family, like, it's just like just great. But like, we could have got a Lenny Kravitz cameo because <laughs> like, <laughs> like at the time. But yeah, I picked Lisa Bonet because like she has a very like exotic look about her, and I feel like she just looks like someone who would like survive in the desert. <laughs> like, yeah, I no, like, I definitely. Feel that. <laughs> but my first choice, like my immediate one, like all right, if I was booking this realistically out the nineties, it most likely would have been a white leading lady. I picked Sarah Michelle Geller. Buffy the Vampire oh, Slayer. Ninth sister herself. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And I feel like that's another one that's like super teed up. We know she could do the stunts. We know she could do the action sequences. She was really big <laughs> in the 90s and everything. And I just, and I, and I feel like <clears throat> uh, one for one, aesthetically, she has a lot of similarities to Daisy Ray. Really. Like petite frame, but like in shape, can do the action. And I feel like she would, uh, I feel like I've seen her fuck up enough staffs and axes that she would be she would go hand with a lightsaber. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I really like the Lisa Bonet pick. I think Yeah, that's um, that's my that's the one that I'm gonna keep as my one that I actually would pick. Um she has the there's like one character poster for Ray that's like really coming to mind where she's kind of like squinting like at the camera, has like a very serious, pensive face. And I feel like Lisa Bonet fucking bodies that Yeah, like, that's that's like her her default. Face. Yeah, yeah. So um <laughs> Like that definitely to me um, fits, and I, I do think that like I think both of them actually like really fit what you're trying to accomplish here, and it's yes. like um, you know putting someone who's like small petite woman into this role where they really exude a lot of strength, but that strength comes through from their performance, and it's exactly. definitely something that um, both of them I feel like have done well in, in things I've seen them in throughout the years. Uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar has a little bit of that Star Wars history, just. I mean, her, it would be it would be husband's one of the greatest Jedi of all time. <laughs> she was a, was a villain in Rebels. You know, it's great to there you um, go. exactly. You know, that that's really cool. I, I kind of some of this is making me want these people to just have some sort of <laughs> show up. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, but yeah, those are awesome picks. Um, <laughs> I feel like mine is going to be a little underwhelming compared to those two. Uh, but I'll give it to you anyway. I think a big part of, and this might sound stupid, but a big part of Daisy Ridley's performance that like sh- strikes me or like made me like, like inform my decision. Um, I really wanted to pick a British actress. I was about to say her accent. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm and there weren't too many that were like really doing it. And like, were at the height of their like career at the time. And then we're also the right age for that role. Right. Um, but Kate Winslet, I was, I was, I felt like that's where you're going. I fuck with it. (laughs) I'm wrong. She wasn't the star of the Titanic, then she's the star of our recast and sequel trilogy. No, I love that. Um, I love that. And, you know, it's funny, like, I really haven't seen her in much else other than the Titanic and Mayor of Easttown. 
Avatar, Way of Water. Mayor of Easttown's fucking an amazing show. Yeah. I love that was a great um, show. They, like, uh, it's very rare that um TV shows accurately portray like the, fil- the greater area. Philadelphia yeah. <laughs> region. Well, that's the thing. I was I was so impressed with um her performance that I was just the like, dialect and everything. Yeah. yeah, there's no way that she's not taking this and just absolutely making the role her bitch. Um, yeah, like she, you could tell she was hanging around Delco, like <laughs> yeah. picking picking shit up. She had it all off for lunch every day. Big 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 facts. A couple of hoagies, <laughs> hoagies, <laughs> and some coffee. Coffee. Some chocolate. <laughs> call, call your mother. She worries. <laughs> she worries. I went to the Wawa. I got some water and some uh, hoagie. <laughs> They were all out of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that was it. that's it for my. Uh, and that wasn't an underwhelming uh, finale at all. I, I, I think that would have been an amazing choice. Years of her, like really creative, I think, and, and like very much fit the nobody, I guess, type aspect of of Ray. Yeah. Kate Winslet's like just pure star power. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't, I, I was I, I too was trying to avoid mega stars as much as I could because I know like that's usually not George Lucas's mo to pick like super actors. Mm-hmm. But you know, like in the nineties, like you said, we didn't have many people we could pick from without it no. being like way out the off the reservation. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was all super actors um, in that time, and it was like all these people just like they made their mark on the industry the way that I don't think even modern actors are touching. Uh, maybe Pedro Pascal has that kind of like, you know, you know what I think that is though as well. It's like, and I hate the fucking word oversaturation, but movies are being made at such a more like extensive clip that it's mm-hmm. like movies in the nineties felt like a special event. Now it's like trying to go to the movies, yeah. But before it's just like we're going, like you planned to go to like we're going Friday, we're going to the movies. It's like and if you ah. weren't going to the movies, you're like I'm going to Suncrest Coast Videos, yeah, Sun Coast, yeah. Like, 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 like yeah, like 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 it, it, it's like in the '90s. I feel like especially as a kid, like you kind of lived in between movie releases. That's kind of like a lot of people like the their sense of time is based off like when movies came out. So it's like, oh yeah, that's when such and such came out. It's like, oh I remember seeing this, that and third. Like a lot of people's core memories are tied to your movies and and I feel like back then it's like we didn't get big movies every other week or once a month. It's like maybe like once a it was like once a quarter, like once every four months. Like, you know, you would get like your your winter movies, like the Harry Potters, and you would get like the summer blockbusters and stuff. And, but it was like just that. But it's like now like especially with streaming and this is like the golden the I'm gonna call it the platinum age of television because so many movie actors are now are wanting to do T V because it's like Dude, uh, the format's so much better for storytelling. One thousand percent, one thousand percent. But <laughs> but you know, like like ten years ago, it was yeah. like it, it was just like people were like, oh, don't disrespect me with no TV role. <laughs> like the fuck wrong with you? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, why sure. would I ever want to do that? I am an actor. Why would I ever do TV? <laughs> Say what you want, but people have got to credit Netflix for oh, changing yeah. the industry in that way. Um, one one thousand percent. I'm trying to. I'm a, it'll. I'm sure by the time the next time we speak, like or do an episode, it'll come to me. But but I'm trying to think of like who the actor was that kind of like was the first one through the wall like a big actor that decided to do a tv series and it was just like what are you doing here <laughs> like, interesting like i don't want to like was, say it was steve, a marvel steve thing Carell. but he did that was bet the other way around like no, he, got he, in, he got 40 year old virgin he got 40 year old virgin because of the office really i have to go back uh-huh. on yeah, no, you're yeah. Probably that's right. that's you're that's probably why right. he that's why he left that's why he left the office to do movies and because that was the formula, you essentially you know did TV until they felt like they could bet on you and put you in a movie, but that was kind of literally sure. how it works. But yeah, I'm trying to think. I feel like I know. I feel like I that like my eat like my quick to say something just to say something feel like it was more Marvel related. Like my quick to just be like. Oh, who was the first one through the wall? Like, yeah, I feel like it might have been Marvel related. I can't, couldn't confirm that, but I do remember well, Samuel L. Jackson showing up on Agents of Shield was like yeah, a really big thing. Like, I do was. remember that. And I think that there was a lot of people that were in Black Mirror. Yeah, that, I'm sure that helped too. Black um, Mirror's been out way longer than what I realized it was because, like, yeah. it didn't pick up steam until like mad seasons in. But 
yeah it was it was either marvel or a netflix something but like when like movie actors was like you know what let me let me let me, let me do some tv <laughs> let, me get this re- let me get this reoccurring paycheck <laughs> like this then the third but that was I a good one i wouldn't be surprised if it was yeah. in the comedy space and it went yeah that wouldn't surprise me yeah because right. yeah, I remember I remember like Will Ferrell sh- like showing up and doing his little stint on Office and stuff like that was like a a big ish deal. <laughs> like, like, I was like, oh shit, it's Will Ferrell. What are you doing here? <laughs> you do movies. He's doing his struggling routine. Yep. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think we got that was everybody, right? We got we got that we covered everybody. everyone. Yeah. Wonderful. So that has been the sequel a- trilogy edition. A Star Wars podcast. <laughs> Recast them. <laughs> I hardly know. <laughs> I love that name. Part two. <laughs> Part two. Part two. Yeah, we got we got to figure out like what our third, what our stipulation is going to be for the prequel trilogies. We got. Yeah, we gotta we're gonna have to go. discuss that off air. And, <laughs> yeah, uh, we gotta make it a really, good one. Yeah, we'll make it. A, we'll make it a really fun one. Um, Foreign be, film actors. <laughs> <laughs> that'll likely be <laughs> next week's episode. I'm so fucked if it's foreign film actors. No, uh, <laughs> I, don't know. I, I did like your idea last week of it being like actors who only like actors from like only Tarantino movies or something yeah. like that. Like so like Christopher Nolan movies only or something. Oh, like, yeah, I'd uh, be all about that. Something about something. <laughs> I'd like actually that. I'd really like to do the Nolan one, but we'll talk about it. Alright, well fuck it. <laughs> fuck it <laughs> <we> all. <laughs> <laughs> well, problem solved. <laughs> yeah. I'm totally cheating uh for one of my castings for that one. But uh all right, man. well there we go. <laughs> all right, so we'll be doing the prequel trilogy next week. Only using actors that have been in Christopher Nolan movies. Yeah. If, if, I, I guess so people don't like try to police us. I don't think we're saying that if they've done movies with other people, they can't qualify, but they would have had to done at least a movie yes. with Christopher Nolan. Okay. Yeah, no. I think because you know, that. somebody will get in the comments like, oh, you can't pick Leo. He's worked with Scorsese. He's like, all right, bro. No, <laughs> we, we are aware of that. The animaniacs, <laughs> calm down, calm down. Right, all right, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I know you guys are crazy, but relax. Chill. Chill. <laughs> <laughs> well, that has been it for this week's edition of Annie, are you okay? A Star Wars podcast. Please follow us on our socials at Annie, the letters R U O K pod on Instagram and Twitter, and over on our sister podcast, Dragon Ball for Life, which you can find us at DB4L underscore pod. Oh, life. And you can find me at Mikey the Illist on Instagram, or Mikey underscore the Illist on Instagram. And Matt, they can find you at, correct me if I'm wrong, underscore menace, the number two sobriety. That's underscore menace to sobriety. Um, right. For the sake of promotion, I'll just continue to promote DB4L because my at's in the bio anyway. <laughs> We're true. trying to send traffic there. So all things DB4L for me. And you can just find my other shit through there. Yeah, go give us a listen. <laughs> L there. underscore if, pod. If you're into anime news dragon ball coverage we have some fun interviews our interview series the dragon call as uh we've just released part one of an interview with caustic phoenix part two coming out this Shout out coming to friday phoenix. um so exciting things going on there uh, at dragon ball for life um for and life. matt go ahead and, and give him that outro you've, you've so eloquently created i got you good brother well animaniacs Never forget, it could be the prequels, it could be the sequels. Today could have been Poe, could have been Finn, could have been Ray. Life can be a beach, but as long as there's no sand, always remember, Annie's gonna be okay. Be okay. <laughs> Bow. We'll catch you next time. May the force be with you. And with you. Later, nerds. <laughs>